Good day, Industrial Advisor listeners, and thank you for tuning in. If you have not subscribed, please do so by clicking subscribe wherever you podcast. Click the like button and hit the bell if you want notifications of when we put up new content. Leave us a comment about anything we discuss here today or general comments about the show. Now, let's get into it. Welcome to our Industrial Advisors podcast. You have Bill Condon and Matt McGregor. And today we're going to be talking about Q2 recap leasing and sales. And that's been an interesting quarter, wouldn't you say, Matt? It's been a crazy quarter for sure. It's been an interesting year with, uh, you know, just all the financial changes in the markets and, and everything going on. And I think everybody's been anticipating a huge slowdown. We And we'll get to the statistics. We haven't seen that, but it's definitely been interesting. I mean, the one thing I would say about this year is just unpredictable. Yeah, unpredictable. And it's crazy to think we're already halfway through the year you know, capital markets, and we'll jump into some of this stuff. It's been a really kind of historically low volume from a capital market standpoint with where debt has been. But leasing's been okay. Leasing's been okay. The statistics that we're about to go over don't sound great, but then we'll get into some detail that are going to make them sound a lot better. And then, and then, you know, I will say at this point, I'm I'm probably winning the bet uh, based on the uh, predictions at the beginning of the year, I said 5 million feet of total <laughs> absorption, and I believe you said seven. I said seven. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a really strong second half of the year, though. So, <laughs> so You're going to need it. I'm staying, <laughs> staying with my prediction. Yeah. Very good. Let's just jump into the statistics. So vacancy climbed slightly to 4.4%, which is, you know, strangely enough, that's, a, that's still a low vacancy. We call 6% kind of the slack tide where above 6% is... A tenant's market below 6% as a landlord market. We were as low as 3.4, but the, a lot of the rest of the West Coast was around 1% and climbing, yep. right? But I would say 4.4 doesn't scare me. Mm -mm. Uh, you know, it's certainly not 3.4, but we're climbing slightly. This quarter, we're reporting a negative 190,000 square feet of negative absorption too flat, right? Everybody's going to report, and we, you know, everybody's usually within call call it five to eight hundred thousand feet of each other. So you're everybody's going to see numbers coming out in the next couple of weeks. Collier's is reporting about two hundred thousand feet of negative absorption to flat. Yep, and you know, to your point earlier, four and a half percent, call it give or take, right? It's still a good, healthy market on the landlord side, right? You look That's at right. historically where vacancy's been, four and a half percent still. A really healthy market for us. You know, different segments are a little bit different. I think, you know, we've talked on this before, but that 100 to 200 range seems to be a good amount of product available mm -hmm. in that size range. So we are starting to see in that size range, rents are still, you know, going up in that size range, but there's more concessions. So we're seeing more free rent, we're seeing more TI dollars, mm -hmm. landlords get more aggressive in that particular size range just because of the amount of competition in that size, size range. That's right. Uh, and let's talk about. What I would say is, you know, we just reported the actual absorption numbers. Let's talk about reality in absorption. Here's an interesting statistic in talking with the Inland Empire, who we're always, you know, watching down in California. I think this is the first quarter I've ever seen that we outpace them in signings. We signed six deals in Q2, greater than 100,000. Obviously, that's not recording right now. Yep. They, they recorded zero. So this is the first time we've outpaced them. Yeah. Well, I've always said the Puget Sound's a better market than the Inland Empire. <laughs> that's so. right. No, yeah. that's that's interesting. I mean, they've that market has been so active for so long. Yes. Um, to see it come to a halt like it has is is interesting. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about our market is there's always seems to be activity, right? So that's right. even if you are in that one to two range where there's amount of a good amount of product, there's activity in that size range. There's deals out there that you can go get if you want to on on the landlord side. But yes, we have a good amount of the big box activity right now, I would say. I would say we have really good. I mean, yeah. no, there's no bleeding performance. Pretty much anything that's being completed or, or just past completion of construction is being leased. Like, we don't have any any buildings just sitting around for months or, and in some cases, years on, right. on the big box. So I think we're doing well there. But, you know, backing up to what I said, let's talk reality of absorption. So... Right now, you know, through the year, let's just say it's we're recording negative absorption of about 600,000 feet year to date. 
But as we said in the last quarter, when you when you take the negative absorption minus the signed deals that will absorb and occupy by the year end, in Q1, we were sitting at about 1.2 million feet of positive absorption that we were predicting to occupy by the end of the year. Now with signings that we think commitments that are happening through Q2, we think we're at about 2.2 million feet of positive absorption that will catch up by year's end. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And the third quarter is going to be a really good quarter from a absorption standpoint. For sure. Because I think some of those deals will ink and move in during the, the third quarter. Some will push to fourth. But the, mm-hmm. again, I do think the second half is going to be a really good quarter from an absorption standpoint or, or half, second half of the year from an absorption standpoint. Yeah. The, the one deal that would, might have swung to your favor to get you to 7 million feet is the floor and decor deal. But I don't see movement on that site yet. I've been you know, we go out to Fredrickson, you know, every week or so, and I'm not seeing, you know, you know, anything that tells me that that's going to complete this year. Yeah. At this yeah. point. I will see on that. Time will tell. Yeah. Um, th- that would swing the numbers. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. For sure. So, yeah. So, big box absorbing well. I mean, we mentioned a couple of the deals. Toy Smith signed at the new Jeff Davis building. So, that was a nice- Davis had a great quarter. He you had, had a great quarter. And, pl- and then you have the Tacoma Central building with- Infinity. Infinity Global for what is that about two seventy or eighty? Yeah, two eighty. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, congratulations, Jeff Davis, on a great quarter and the leasing brokers on those projects. But we definitely had an uptick in in deals in that hundred thousand foot range, right? I mean that we've been reporting that has been the hole in the market. I think a couple of quarters ago when we kind of identified that, oh gosh, you know, like two thousand eight, the you remember the. The, the listing you didn't want was 50, 50 to, 70. to 70. Yeah, <laughs> that was problematic. <laughs> yeah. And now it's kind of one to 200 where we had, I think we counted like 43 options north to south in the entire market. That certainly is absorbing. And we, the last few weeks, man, have we had a flurry of activity on those spaces. Yeah. I mean, we've done multiple deals on the tenants side the last couple of weeks in that size range. And then our list, some of our listings that we have, we have leases heading out on you know three or four of those type of building. So that's really good. And that's, a, I think, it always kind of has been the bread and butter of our market is that 100 to 200-ish range. And so it's great to see the, the volume pick up in that, in that size range. You know, it's interesting. Some of this activity that we're seeing on the bigger box side is, is a result of, I think, onshoring, right? So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've been watching this onshoring statistic and going, is it real? Is this something just people are talking about or is it real? It's real. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing it in our local market. We're definitely seeing it nationally. You know, I don't want to call it a mass exodus out of China as, you know, how do you do that? But we are seeing it nationally. We're seeing, you know, app microchip stuff come home. We're seeing battery plants, obviously a huge push for that. We're seeing even hello manufacturing, you know, stuff is coming home due to the supply chain issues, due to issue political issues with China due to tariffs. We're also seeing nearshoring. Mexico is going crazy. Yeah. Mostly right up by the border. Unfortunately, what a lot of people don't know is I don't I hate to say it, but China's outsmarted a lot of us, including Mexico, where a lot of those warehouses and companies, they've just moved there. So they've acquired and built their facilities and you drive around the greater Tijuana area and you see Chinese logos all over buildings. Why? Free trade, right? And close proximity. And yeah, and so I was a little surprised when we heard that recently that Mexico isn't controlling that versus selling that off to China. Yeah. Yeah. And you you touched on this earlier, but I think that just supply chain risk is a big reason why a lot of the companies are saying, hey, we need to control our product. We want it here. And so we're seeing some of those companies take down more space because of that. That's right. And we're seeing that, you know, shifting back to the Northwest. I can't name names, but there's been a couple companies absorbing quite a bit of square footage that this has a lot to do with that, right? Correct. And we're seeing small companies. We're even seeing, you know, you can't call this onshoring, but you could say it's an insurance play where companies are bulking up on square footage, carrying more inventory, you know, gone are the days of just in time inventory, the the JIT, and, and now people bulking up on inventory because of the risk of supply chain delays, right? 
Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that. I think it'll that that concept will help with absorption as well. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about the the capital market side. You know, it's been a really really slow first half from a volume standpoint. Now there was a couple deals that did trade in Q2, which was good to see. Recently there was that that building in Fife that sold for just under twenty three million. Um, Correct. Congrats, Ari. Uh, yeah, team. yeah, they're they're great. Yeah, principal sold that to Invesco. Yep. Uh, nice to see Invesco buy. Uh, yeah, something in our been market. I know they've been they've been trying and and have come close on some deals. So it was really good to to see them close on a property. Bridge had a big one. Yep. Bridge had a nice sale. I think that congrats, um, yeah, congrats to Bridge. The Fife deal. I I like that deal at that basis. I mean, that For was sure. a couple hundred bucks a foot. Fifty bucks below replacement. Yeah, two hundred three bucks if you include the That's mez. A great buy. Uh, I really like that price per pound for 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 Invesco there. I would say that maybe is the my favorite deal of the quarter because of the pounds per square foot. Yeah, but an old you know only a hundred thirty four million in transactions, six deals. I you know I didn't have the time to look back to say when it, you know how long has it been? Is this the lowest quarter in how many years? But I would say easily ten years. I mean, yeah, one hundred thirty four million in a quarter. I, it's gonna. It's been a long time since we had a quiet that quarter that quiet. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of of buyers that are out there are just cautious and have hit pause, you know. And even on good assets that that are out there that haven't traded, simply because the buying pool is so limited right now. That's right. I, I think we'll see. But you know, obviously this you know an uptick in the second half just because the volume's been so slow. But I think we'll see you know a fair amount of uptick Q three Q four. Well, it's interesting because we've seen so many pulled. Because they didn't hit pricing, yeah, or just didn't get offers, right? Some of them have been a big surprise to me. the The biggest one, I mean, you've had two goes now with the Amazon Fife deal, great building, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, a land lease that's got you know some complications to it, but you know you're seeing some great assets that over the last ten years would have traded, period even with some complications to it that just aren't trading. And and we've experienced it in some of the stuff we've brought out that we're just not hitting the numbers. I think, you know, right now, I don't know that I'm predicting a bounce back of that because it's so volatile. It's so unpredictable. People are being so careful. And all of a sudden you're getting a bunch of offers and it looks great. And then your buying pool erodes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just an interesting time right now. But I think for good quality assets, we'll still see those trade. Pricing expectation of the seller has to be in line with where market is, which some people are still Can trying to challenge. figure that out. Yeah, yeah for well, sure. And and people are still trying to pinpoint where market is today. That's right. Land has been non-existent this quarter. Well, man, yeah, if you were going to pinpoint one thing that's not going well, it would be land. No trades. Yeah, not one. And a couple that went out there that didn't trade, right? I would say I don't even know how many we we saw fall out of contract in the last several quarters that were smaller projects that people don't want to build into that one two hundred thousand feet and maybe they were under contract at thirty forty bucks a foot and now that land is you know worth eighteen or twenty yep in certain markets but I would say we've had a you know an unusually high amount of land droppings in that smaller one and then the other thing is. These the 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 other the larger ones are just taking forever to yeah. entitle. I mean, right. one after another, where you think, oh, these guys were predicted to go this year, and you're finding out oh, maybe not for a year or two. Yeah, I mean entitlements, development. I mean all of that stuff plays into why you know land is so hard right now, mm -hmm. right? And of course, debt is a big factor. Yeah, I mean we talked about this on a on that debt podcast, but you know if you if you reeled back five or six quarters ago. Construction debt, you know that that temporary debt before you fully stabilize it was around three percent. It's nine. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. and then obviously the 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 value of land and and then all the construction costs went way up. Right. right? I think I could see a shift in that because I do see a you know we've got about five point seven million under construction, but you have had several people drop projects, several people that own land say. Nope, not going spec. So I think these vendors, you know, whether it be Poe, Sierra, and others, I my my prediction is in about a year because of these drops, right? Because it yeah. takes time to get yeah. this queued back up. That they're going to be a little bit more available, and maybe we'll see some adjustments in pricing due to that. Yeah, and some some 
owners will just want, you know, need to sell, right? And right. so there will be opportunities there. But all in all, I would say Q2 has been a quiet quarter mm-hmm. uh, on the leasing and sales side. But we expect Q3 to pick pick up quite a bit. If you're basing it on the last three to four weeks, yeah. man, it yeah. just seems like, you know, I don't know if it's been a temporary, but I mean, we're busy. It's a temporary, you know, blip on the radar, but all of a sudden we're just seeing, as we mentioned, a lot of activity, mostly in that 100,000 square foot size range, a lot of RFPs. So if that continues, I agree with you, but I think you're going to, you know, lose our- I was going to say, maybe I was light on the 7 million feet <laughs> prediction. Maybe it should be more like 9 or 10, like well, we've had the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, if, if our prediction, we're agreeing that right now we're at about 2.2 million feet of- Stuff that we'll occupy by the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. So you got a lot of catching up to do. To yeah. Get Seven million. I better feet. get. I better start calling, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, well thank we, you yeah. for listening to our Q2 recap, and uh, we'll look forward to being in touch soon. Have a great Q3. 